day two of telling my story until I can afford to leave Texas. So over the last year, I've lost over 70 pounds. I was admitted to the hospital for four days to treat anemia and get a blood transfusion and infusions. And during that time, I just had a chance conversation with a nurse who was discussing their weight loss. And they mentioned the term insulin resistance, which I'd never heard of before. I immediately started searching the term insulin resistance after they left my room. And over the next couple of weeks, I understood more and more why I had not been able to lose any weight since being diagnosed with Hashimoto's, why my body reacted the way it did to certain foods, and which types of foods to avoid. I was doing so well, and I was reversing my anemia and my diabetes. I was really proud of myself. Later that same year in 2023, I had my gallbladder removed, and I doubled down even more on my health goals, going for walks every single day, preparing healthier foods, I started to understand about ultra processed foods because I hadn't realized before that that was the actual problem causing all of my issues. But I was doing great and having lots of progress, especially with weight loss, which I'd struggled with for, you know, close to two decades. Then in May of this year, I was wrongly diagnosed with UTI that was incorrectly escalated to a kidney infection by a doctor who misinterpreted my radiology report from the ER. Over the course of seven weeks, I'd been given so many different antibiotics, cephalexin, ciproflexin, rosefin, nitrofuratoin, ceftonir, Bactrim. I went through an insane amount of pain um, on these antibiotics. I had back pain, pain in my right side. My liver was getting very like swollen and going through a lot of inflammation. I was having convulsions. My dehydration was so extreme, I never felt like I was hydrated. My eyes were always dry. My throat was always burning. My body always felt like really sluggish and I had chills, tremors. My blood pressure was spiking up and down like crazy. They had me admitted to the ER a couple of times, going up and down really rapidly on the machines. The crazy thing though was that no one ever took me seriously. By the end of the appointments, every time they would say, there's nothing wrong with you, you're just a little dehydrated, go home. Or they would say, oh, you just have anxiety. All of this is just anxiety. And I felt like I was going to have a heart attack or a stroke or something major was happening. I was having like pain and pressure in the sides of my neck. I was having like pain and weight like on top of my chest, crushing me. I was feeling like I was being smothered, like I couldn't get enough oxygen into my body. All of this to me said that it could be my heart. And I know from going through um, iron deficiency anemia previously that there was a good chance all of this was anemia because a lot of the symptoms were on point with anemia. I ended up going to a free clinic that I found out about while I was going through all this. And I was very lucky to have one doctor that I spoke to who, when I told her that I have deficiencies like iron deficiency and that I've had anemia and I was hospitalized for it before, she tested me for a number of different deficiencies when I asked her to. I came prepared with like a list and I asked her, please check me for like vitamin D, magnesium and iron and B12 and all these things. And she was pretty sure it was gonna be B12. And she just wanted to check me for that. And I said, no, please, I'm begging you. Test me for all of these things because we don't know what it is. And it could be anything else because all of these have similar symptoms. And I just need to know. I really need to know what's going on. And it could be multiple things. And she's like, okay, okay. So she tested me for everything. And we did end up finding out that I was vitamin D deficient. She prescribed me vitamin D pills. And once I started taking those within about two weeks, most of my symptoms started to subside. So the um, shortness of breath, my racing heart, a lot of those things came down quite a bit after just the first two weeks on the pills. I was still going through antibiotics at that time though. They still kept prescribing me more and more antibiotics. And I wanted to stop taking them because the pain was so severe in my back and in my right side. There were so many problems. I even had my bladder over distended because I was drinking so much water just trying to survive and stay hydrated. I really felt abandoned by the system and like I was figuring everything out myself. 
I had to figure out a special diet of what to eat to help detox my liver through all this medication. I had to figure out about electrolytes and that I probably was low electrolytes and that's why my body wasn't absorbing the water. I had to figure out so many different things alone. And I don't understand why nobody told me. I don't understand why the doctors couldn't even figure out that I was coming back in again and again and again because of anemia and because of electrolyte imbalance. Because I came in so many times, they had to find something wrong with me. So they found an infection. Even though I was going through so much pain in my back and my right side, convulsions throughout my body, the extreme dehydration, bladder problems, I was being told by the ER and the free clinic to continue taking my medications, even as my liver and kidney enzyme levels were showing signs of stress. Yeah, so come to find out, they weren't even looking at my urine cultures. They were only looking at my urine dip test. And the urine cultures, once I finally got them to give me, I don't know why, but nobody would look at the urine cultures and they would not tell me the results of the urine cultures. And I've been asking for weeks. So I finally got access to one of them online on the um, ER website. They had six cultures uploaded there. And I looked at the cultures and none of them, they all said either negative or contamination. None of them showed that I had an infection. None of them showed that I had a UTI. So I had to start putting it together in my own head and figure out what the hell was going on. While I was at this free clinic, they suggested a pap smear and I hadn't had one in years. And so I went and lo and behold, they discovered an abscess. And now knowing all this information about the urine cultures, I know that obviously it was contaminated. It wasn't a UTI. It was never a kidney infection. And those things were wrongly escalated without them looking at my urine culture results. And it must have contaminated some of the samples. But the weird thing is nobody told me that some of my tests were negative. Nobody told me that my urine cultures were negative. Nobody told me. Nobody even gave me a chance to like figure it out. <sighs> There's a lot more to tell. I am very grateful for the free clinic for helping me, um, the women there especially, the woman who gave me a pap smear and found the abscess, the woman who found my vitamin D deficiency, diagnosed me and provided me with supplements to take care of that problem. The other people there, I am not grateful to some of the people there who escalated my infection that was non-existent. And especially not grateful to the one male doctor who told me to in my face when he gave me the prescription. Yeah, I know that Bactrim can cause kidney failure, but, and a lot of doctors don't like to use it, but not me. <laughs> he literally told me to my face that the medicine he put me on is known for causing kidney failure. But that even though other doctors are, are afraid to use it and don't think it's the best medicine, he's not. And he knew that I had a kidney infection and that I needed this medicine. And he was so proud of himself. Meanwhile, he was the one who misinterpreted my radiology scans from the ER and said that there was a kidney infection, which was not there. Yeah, there was no kidney infection. I, in fact, I took the same radiology report to another doctor at the same facility. And that doctor told me, nope, nothing there says kidney infection. Nothing. He's like, in fact... There's a line right here saying that you do not have a kidney infection. <laughs> I actually recorded the guy confirming that there was no kidney infection on my report. Then the doctor that I saw escalated it to a kidney infection. So Okay. What are you taking or what did you take? I have taken a lot of things. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they first gave me cephalexin at the ER. Yeah. I came back in two weeks later. They said I still had a UTI. Okay. Um, and then, and that wasn't even what I originally went there for. I was having breathing issues and stuff. Oh, okay. I have anemia, which is, you know, yeah. starting to resolve. Yeah. And I didn't realize, but when I came here, I found out I have a severe vitamin D deficiency. So okay. yeah. I had like low blood volume. Yeah. Anyway, but when I was there, they found supposedly a UTI. I okay. took the medicine for that. I took like six other medicines between okay. the ER and here because um, they kept saying I still had it. I still okay. had it. I still had it. Yeah, well, you know, are you having any symptoms like when you go pee or anything? Does it hurt? Or? Well, since I started taking the medicines, yes, I've had. Uh, when I went in for a CT scan, they said my bladder was distended. Okay. I want to show you the report. All right. So you can see. Yeah. And then I just wanted to ask you too because that's said that on here it says 
kidney infection, but I don't see it on the report at all. So. Well, I mean, it depends. I guess, you know, kidney infection is more, you know, it says here, there's oh, no, there's the everything it says is negative here. Yeah. So then, you know. Uh, so can you read through this and just see, does it say kidney infection? No, not here. But they basically say that there's no problems with the, you know, with the kidneys and that the CT yeah, looks normal. Yeah, I think you might have misread it and put me on the yeah. back trim by mistake. Yeah, so this has been extremely frustrating and um, there's been a lot of tears and a lot of anger and um, a lot of just fear, wondering if some of this damage to my body is going to be permanent. I still don't know. The doctors are very slow about getting me in to get testing done. I have had a fibro scan, which is good. My liver is damaged, but it looks okay like it could recover. I just got to keep on this diet and keep um, eating lots of healthy nutrients and taking my supplements. And then as far as what's going on in my back and my side, I don't know. I want them to get me in for an ultrasound or a CT scan or something to look at my kidneys and look around my rib cage and in my side and find out what is causing me all this pain, what is causing all this tightness. Is this something that's going to heal up over time or am I going to be permanently disabled? Because so far it's been three months since I stopped antibiotics and I'm still having a lot of difficulty sitting up. Um, I mostly have to lay down or I have to walk around. So I, thankfully I can do my exercise and stuff. But I can't sit up for long periods of time. And I had all these thoughts about writing ebooks about my health journey, you know. And, you know, that'd be a way to help others and support my family financially. And I don't even feel like I can sit up long enough to write them. It's hard for me to sit up long enough to pack the packages from my ASMR shop. It's hard to lay in a comfortable enough position to, like, play with my kids and hold my kids. I can't stand up long enough to even cook dinner sometimes. I can't bend over and take care of most household tasks. My husband is basically my caretaker and has been my caretaker for like six months. <laughs> Which I'm grateful, I appreciate him, you know, being my caretaker. But he shouldn't have to do all that. Proud of myself for just surviving all of this. But I just want to do better. I just want to have better doctors who will stay on top of my anemia so I can finally get rid of it. Um, right now, it's been really hard for me to even take my iron pills. And, I mean, they cause me to get super dehydrated and cause a lot of my symptoms to get worse. So, like, taking the pills every other day has been, you know, a very stressful thought. I've been thinking about maybe taking liquid iron or something like that. I have to get money for more supplements. I can't believe how much money I've had to spend on all this, on all the medications that were harming me. I had to pay for all those out of pocket because I don't have insurance. I have to pay for all these supplements out of pocket. It's just a lot, you know. I am grateful. I am grateful that I have been reversing my diabetes. I'm only pre-diabetic now. I don't have to take insulin anymore. I control with diet and exercise alone. And that's been great because insulin was costing me at least $100 a month before. So, and, and then all the stuff that goes with it, you know, the testing strips and all this other stuff. And now I don't have to spend that. So that helps. Well, I can tell that this audio has gotten extremely long. I probably should. Um, stop this and save something for tomorrow but to y'all I just want to say thank you for listening um, I want to share a lot more about my health journey but like creating content right now has been very difficult for me um, I just feel like a lack of energy a lack of mental clarity a lack of stamina to do all these things and um, I'm just trying to do my best the shop right now is the thing that's making me the most money my ASMR shop so that's why I've been focusing on that with the amount of energy and the um, short amount of time that I'm able to sit up and stuff I focus a lot on getting things into the shop and um, so if y'all can support my ASMR shop and um, maybe share it with a friend I have been struggling with my ASMR shop over the past uh, month or so since I switched my accounts because I don't think a lot of people are seeing 
my shop updates on social media and social media is where I make most of my sales. So if you could tell a friend about my ASMR shop, that would help me a lot too. I am really in the hole financially right now and um, very limited on what I can do for work until my body heals a bit more, hopefully. And so the shop is probably the best way to support me other than a financial donation. My ASMR shop is asmrfamiliashop.com. I think a lot of people don't actually know that this is my old ASMR page and they have no idea who I am. <laughs> the people who really know me know who I am because they remember my name, Chantilly. But some people might not remember or know who I am on this account. But anyway, thank you all for listening and I will talk to you on the next one.